Okay, it's recording. So hi guys, hello. So it's a uh, exciting day today because we're going to learn about leukemia. Nasa leukemia na tayo guys. And um, so our last topic, our last topic was MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome. And let me just review uh, um, to qualify it as an MDS, it should be, it should have the number of blasts, which should be less than 20%, less than 20%. Ma'am, ano pa dapat ang normal ba yun ng mga blast cells in the bone marrow? It should be 1 to 2%. It's the normal value. 1 to 2% lang, guys. So, if it's about 5% or more, but less than 20%, less than 20%, MDS yun. And now, we're proceeding to leukemia, which has blast cells in the bone marrow biopsy as much as 20%, more than 20% blast, it's qualified as leukemia. Yeah, and so that's our topic for today. So in summary, yeah, and leukemia is a blood, blood cancer. Blood, blood cancer. Yeah, blood cancer shop. So it's a cancer of your blood cells. Ano ba ang nagpapodis ng blood cells, guys? Diba? Bone marrow. So your bone marrow is um, creating abnormal hematopoietic cells, which eventually, itong mga abnormal hematopoietic cells, they are proliferating uncontrollably. Yeah, dun sa notes no, sabi niya, it is a malignant neoplasm characterized by disorderly, purposeless, uncontrolled proliferation of one or more hematopoietic stem cells. So can if we just if we would um break down the word leukemia, so look look, diba? it's white blood cells and emia points to blood, but class, um it's a it's a misnomer or it's wrong to say that if you have leukemia, the white blood cells are the one which are abnormal. But apparently, all, all of the hematopoietic cells can be effective when you have leukemia. But um, almost all of the hematopoietic stem cells are affected if you have leukemia. But plus, we have two types of leukemia myeloid leukemia and lymphoid leukemia so depending on the cell line yun yung naaapektuhan ng leukemia so hindi lang white blood cells pwedeng maapektuhan ng red blood cells pwedeng maapektuhan ang platelets so it's cancer of the blood cells yeah. so there is excess proliferation of can of this cancer cells plus diba parang if we're going to think about cancer so the cells of the person who have cancer are abnormal. Yeah. They develop abnormally. Yeah. So you cannot expect them to act normally. Kasi nga, um, there's something wrong with the with the with how the cells is. Um actually leukemia, its etiology or its source is usually due to genetic mutation. So that genetic mutation may be caused by chemotherapy or genetic lang. So may malay sa chromosome niya, guys. And eventually, this chromosome, if we just um, review it a bit, your chromosome contains your DNA. Kung mali ang code na nasa DNA, that's your genetic code, kung mali yung coding na yun, if there's something wrong with the code in your DNA, then it will make faulty um, cells. It will make faulty hematopoietic stem cells. So you can not ex you can expect for a faulty faulty DNA to create a healthy cells. Are you with me, class? So abnormal yung chromosome, abnormal yung gene, malamang abnormal rin yung end product, which will be your cells. So cancer, so usually yung cancer, it's abnormal development and proliferation. It's uncontrolled. So ang raming production ang nangyayari dito. So there's something wrong with your bone marrow because that is the site where your cells are um, produced. And as you can see in this image, so this is the normal blood. So usually, the ba, dapat mas marami ang red blood cells. Yan. And your WBCs are this ones. Apparently, in a peripheral 
blood smear of a leukemic patient, it is the the red blood cells are overcrowded with so much um, WBCs. And actually, these WBCs look like immature cells or mga blast sila. So if we're going to go with this slide, so dito tayo muna, dito sa sign na to. So we have um, a gene mutation. So there's something wrong with the chromosome. Example is there's a translocation, mga ganong term, yung T. Pag manakita kayo yung T, T dyan, translocation. Pag I and V, inversion. Pag DEL, deletion in a certain chromosome. So, there is gene mutation. So, gene mutation happens in the chromosome. And this gene mutation will create leukemic cells. So, leukemic cells, or sabi natin, cancer cells. And this cancer cells fails to differentiate. Ibig sabihin, guys, they do not have the capacity to mature. From an immature cell, that it will differentiate to a mature cell. But apparently, class, um, Leukemic cells or cancer cells has do not have the ability to do that. So, hanggang nasa mga immature lang siya, immature stage, but replicates excessively. Ibig sabihin, itong immature cell na to, hindi siya nagmamature, but it has the capacity to photocopy itself, itself copy itself, replicate itself. Lumarami siya, pero hindi siya nagmamature. May ba tayo? So I prepared a couple of links before watching um before watching this so it can help you class. So if you have any questions, just um give me a message or something. So your leukemic cells they can affect your myeloid stem cells or your lymphoid stem cells. Pag sinasabi natin lymphoid stem cells class, it can affect your lymphocytes, so your B cells your T cells, isn't it your B cells can differentiate into or mature into a plasma cell. Ba? Yun yung nagproproduce ng antibodies. So when we talk about um, acute lymphoid leukemia, um, mostly the cancer cells are your lymphoid stem cells. Yan. So may mali sa lymphocytes. But class, our first topic will be acute myeloid leukemia. So your acute myeloid leukemia will mostly affect your myeloid stem cells. At itong myeloid stem cells, it will um, mature into your red blood cells, into your granulocytes neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. It can also mature as platelets, megakaryocytes, and also monocytes. Yeah. So, myeloid line sila. So far, wala pa naman ako nababasa na that person has both AML and ALL. Yeah. So far, they're different. So, Basically, there's over-proliferation of abnormal cells. In class, if your cells are abnormal, so if, you're, if you have normal blast, diba? normal blast, ito yung mga parent cells ng red blood cells, normal blast, um, they do not have the capacity to carry oxygen. Yan. So pag excessive ang normal blast mo, eh di walang mag-carry ng oxygen mo. What else? If you have myeloblasts or promyelocytes, so they are not as equipped as um, neutrophils. Hindi, hindi nila kayong magfago cytosis. They do not have the capacity to degranulate. So, ganun, abnormal sila class, they are not functioning as in mature cell. Yan. So, problema yan. Ibig sabihin, your body is wasting its um, finite energy, it's limited energy to produce abnormal cells. So, nasasayang ang space sa bone marrow, nasasayang ang resources sa bone marrow because it's producing abnormal cells. Are you, are you with me? Okay ba tayo? Okay ba tayo? Yan. So, basically, leukemia is the abnormal proliferation of malignant cells or abnormal hematopoietic cells. So, the key difference with myelodysplastic syndrome is it has um, blast, which is more than 20%. And for the etiology, so your etiology, meaning the cause of disease, is just 
is basically there's something wrong with your chromosome or your genes. At dahil to sa mga factors na nasabi dito, either number one, it's hereditary, it's genetic, galing sa parents mo. Next, number two, you have chromosomal abilities. So this one, this number, so T9 semicolon 22. So this stands for translocation of chromosome 9 and chromosome 22. So this, um, this karyotype here, it's a Philadelphia chromosome. Philadelphia chromosome. Kasi gusto na i-take note na pag may Philadelphia chromosome, pwede siyang good prognosis. Mas okay, um, the result will be better for the patient in the future or pwede siyang bad prognosis. Uh, they have they have lower um, lower chances of getting cured or being stable. Yeah. So, um, sa Philadelphia chromosome, um, in chronic myeloid leukemia, it's a good prognosis if you have Philadelphia chromosome. However, if you have acute lymphoid leukemia, it is bad, 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 bad prognosis. Pag CML, good prognosis. Yeah. So what else? We have exposure to chemical agents like benzene. So tinanggalan natin to sa mga lower chem natin. Chloramphenicol, um, carbon tetrachloride, ionizing radiations like gamma rays, mga ganun. Um, Next, immunologic defects. We have um, patients with lymphocytic leukemias and lymphoma so immunologic defects so in their cds ganun yung cluster of differentiation sa immunos zero next virus if you have the epstein bar virus diba yung mga kissing disease ganun epstein bar virus can complicate the burkitt's lymphoma so lymphoma is two more in their lymphatic system sabi nila Ang leukemia, it's more on fluid. There's something wrong with the blood. Pag lymphoma, it's usually solid. There are the masses, mass, mga tumor, that are found in your lymphatic tissues. And HTLV, so pakigugol, anong is mo na HTLV, yung matilipatorpic virus, HTLV, and it will result with T-cell leukemia or lymphoma. Yan. So, class hindi or ang leukemia at saka lymphoma, magkaiba sila. So, clinical, clinical feature of your leukemia. Um, guys, so in your leukemia, notice, dito tayo sa image na to, dito. Ano tayo tayo natin? Draw. Notice, in this image, the cells in your leukemia are abundant, guys. However, those are immature cells and abnormal. They do not have the capacity to function just like your mature normal cells, like your RBCs, um, WBCs, and platelets. So, abnormal sila. So, ano kayo yung mga effect nan? So, abnormal. So, Imagine your bone marrow. Isn't it that it is the site where your cells are formed? So, upon forming so much cells, in cases of leukemia, abnormal lahat yan. So, there could be overcrowding inside the bone marrow. There is overcrowding of abnormal cells. So, in such a way that there in for that reason that there is overcrowding, um, the normal cells are being out of place. Wala na silang, they are overwhelmed by abnormal cells. So, kung may mga normal man, na outgrow sila ng mga abnormal cells. And eventually, these abnormal cells will leak out of the bone marrow so that you can see now immature cells in your peripheral blood smear or in your um, circulation. So, ano kayang effect nila? So, let's start with um, saan ba yung mga basic lang muna tayo. So, in cases of anemia, so, decrease na ang normal na red blood cells because there's excess abnormal abnormal um, cells in the bone marrow. So, decrease na ang normal um, red blood cells. So, ano kayang effect nun? Example is fatigue. Yan, weakness. Since your 
Um, your body is not supplied with enough blood supply. What else? Ito. Easy bleeding and bruising. Purplish and patches or spots. Ano kaya nagkakos nito, guys? Diba? Decreased megakaryocytes. Decreased normal platelets. Muscular weakness. So, this can be related to your decreased um, red blood cells. <coughs> this week. What else? There is bone or joints pain or tenderness among the bones and joints. Class, due to the overcrowding of your abnormal um, hematopoietic stem cells, um, it it hits the walls of the joints. It hits the nerves of the the bones and the joints, which can result to pain and swelling. Kaya guys, ang mga patient with leukemia, they are in pain. Patients with cancer are in pain, especially if it's a bone cancer. Kasi, bone na talaga yun eh. So, it's a painful type of cancer. Same thing with leukemia because this abnormal uh, abnormal um, hematopoietic stem cells are hitting the nerves of the bones. Easy shortness of breath. This is also a easy shortness of breath. This is also an effect of decreased normal red blood cells. So note that hindi lang the babies are affected when it comes to leukemia. We have fever, frequent infection. So frequent infections may result to weight loss. This is due to decreased number of normal WBCs. Class, though patients with leukemia has increased WBCs, these WBCs are not normal. Kaya nga, ang, ang therapy nila is chemotherapy. You have to kill all these abnormal um, cells. Next, guys. Ito, swelling of the lymph nodes. Mabot mayroon ganyan enlargement of the spleen or liver. Um, this happens because the abnormal hematopoietic stem cells migrate among these organs. Isn't it na lymph nodes? Sino madalas tumatambay sa lymph nodes? Mga lymphocytes, T-cells, especially T-cells, lymph nodes, and B-cells. And so they, so if there is excess growth, so pag may lymphoid le leukemia ka, there is excess growth of B cells and T cells. Hence, they will migrate in the lymphatic tissues in the lymph nodes, which will result to swelling. And the ba, isn't it that swelling also happens when there is increased infection? Ito guys, spleen and liver enlargement. So same thing, your cells migrate to these organs. Maling yeah. ng cells, kumakalat pa sila, naghahasik ng galagin because of their excess number. Okay, next tayo, paano mag-move? Ngayon, may nila nyo ba ako, guys? So, for the classifications of leukemia, so, depending on what cell line is affected, so, pag myeloid stem cell, so, it's a myeloid leukemia. So, pag myeloid leukemia, it affects your red blood cells, your granulocytes, and your megakaryocytes. At pag lymphoid line, yan, B cell, um, T cell, plasma cells, and so, yan. In class. So, isa rin sa mahalagang classification is if it's acute or chronic leukemia. And subacute, meron ng subacute eh, but most common is acute and chronic. Um, so, guys, all leukemia will expect more than 20% blood cells. That's according to WHO classification. But FAB, yung French, American, British um, group, mas para sa kan, para ang conservative nila. So, it it's only for them, it's only leukemia if it's more than 30%. But what we follow is WHO classification. Yan. So there is more than 20% of blood cells. Yan ang sure yan na acute leukemia. Among chronic leukemia, guys, there is still more than 20% of blood cells. However, you can see more mature cells. Yan. So here in acute, there is rapid proliferation, 
there is a rapid um, rapid um, progression so you can easily see the signs and symptoms yung infection yung bleeding yung weakness mabilis ang um, acute and chronic there it takes a longer longer time to um, progress and subacute so Hindi siya daw ako ng sabog. Ayaw ko na kayong let time. This one, classification of leukemia based on the number of WBCs in peripheral blood smear. Leukemic, subleukemic, and alleukemic. So guys, um looking at the, so far yung mga slides natin. So kailangan natin ng peripheral smear. Kailangan natin ng bone marrow biopsy. Yan, kailangan yan to diagnose leukemia. So we have two types of classifications of your um, leukemia. So FAB class, ito kung si French, American, British. It's I told you it's much more conservative. So it only bases its um, classification on morphology and its appearance. So very simple lang to. Um, nung panahon ko, ito yung memorize namin. FAB lang kami. So acute myeloid leukemia, merong seven. M1 to M7, pero meron yung M0. And we have ALL, acute lymphoid leukemia. Tatlo lang, yung, yung pag-aaralan natin sa, under AFB, L1, L2, L3. However, guys, um, before we go on to your handouts, kanya, ayoko yung, po kayong ma-overwhelm niya kasi medyo marami nga siya eh. But imagine... Sana wag mangyari, pero imagine if you are the leukemic patient and we have the capacity to very to specifically identify your disease, di ba? It's better. Yeah. Though it's burdensome to us students, but in the di in diagnosis, parang it has the way of diagnosis has been so precise that it's very beneficial for the patient. And so now your classification is due. I'm now we not only classify based on morphology, but stain and staining. But now at, what we also use is ultracellular morphology. I mean, we also use electron microscope. We use cytochemical stains, and it will it be positive with myelo peroxidase, and so then so then black B per iodic shift. We now use immunologic markers, yan, immunophenotyping, yung mga CD, CD10, CD33. We now use cytogenetics, so we check their chromosomes, if it's normal or abnormal, and we also base it on clinical signs and symptoms. Grabe sa WHO classification, sobrang kompleto, wala ka nang hahanapin iba. Yan. So now, um, just a review, isn't it that the WHO classification is now used in for clinical diagnosis, mas reliable siya. So let's start now with acute leukemia. Yan, acute myeloid leukemia, and our first acute leukemia will be acute myeloid leukemia. So take note that AML is common among old people. Usually, mga matatanda lang ang nagkakaroon ng A. ML. And guys, see si Francis Magalona, he died due to AML. And, and now and next is for this for this um discussion, AML and ALL lang di discuss natin. So we have acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL, and it's common among children. Yan, myeloid, ang old. Yan. Lymphoplastic leukemia, pang cute pang children. So, we have different names of AML. So, acute myelocytic leukemia or acute myeloid leukemia. Um, ang ginagamit ni Stininger ito, acute non lymphocytic leukemia or ANLL. Um, in your notes, sometimes I natisak ko ANLL. So let's start with acute myeloid leukemia. So, ano mali dito? The myeloid stem cell line. Yan. So the parent cells of red blood cell, the parent cells of um, neutrophils, the parent cells of um, platelets. Yan. So it rapid since it's acute, 
So it rapidly progresses and it's fatal when it if it's untreated. So mabilis ang progression na acute myeloid leukemia. So of course if you're going to check the bone marrow my biopsy, paulit-ulit ako ah, dapat more than 20% blast. And it only affects people who are about 60 years old and above. Ma'am, si Francis M. Wala naman siyang, wala naman pata siyang 60 noon. Yeah. However, he's on that um, older, older population na siya. And class, take note. Pag acute myeloid um, leukemia, so it's mostly positive. Ang myeloid cells, um, they are positive with MPO, myeloperoxidase, and Sudan Black B. Um, myeloperoxidase is an enzyme which is found in your primary granules or azurophilic, azurophilic granules. Ang MPO na hanap mga patid sa um, mga myeloblast line, specifically pro-myelocyte. Ang myeloperoxidase class, it's found in the primary granules or azurophilic granules. So, expect mo, so parang, kung narilito kayo sa mga sinasabi ko, uh, medyo i-review yung hematopoetic, uh, hematopoesis. So, mauna sa, di ba, um, pluripotential stem cell, yung pinakataas, Next is myeloid stem cell or myeloid progenitor. Next is myeloblast. Ang susunod sa myeloblast is promyelocyte. Class, ang primary granules na pro-produce sa promyelocyte or azurophilic granules. At itong primary granules na to, meron silang myeloperoxidase or MPO. Therefore, ang mga merong Mostly, ang mga tao may acute myeloid leukemia, they should be positive. In cytochemical staining, dapat positive sila sa MPO and Sudan, Black B. Yan. And class for the immunophenotyping, they are positive with CD13, 33, 117, 1464. So, these are the markers of myelo of cells from myelocytic in origin. Yan, pamilya ng mga myeloblasts, positive sila sa 13, 33, 117, 14, 64. So, since it's acute, you can see acute infection as its clinical manifestation. So, let's just review the pathogenesis or your, the pathology of your um, leukemia. So, there's something wrong with your DNA. So, there was a mutation in your DNA. And what will be the effect of that? Either it will lose the ability to differentiate. So your hematopoietic stem cells will, or the, the clone, it will lose its ability to differentiate. What does that mean? It loses its ability to mature properly. Yeah. The cells are stuck in the blast stages. So they are abnormal, so they don't function effectively because they are immature pa. Class. So how could you expect a 3-year-old, a 5-year-old, a 10-year-old to drive a car? Diba? They can't. They can't even reach the clutch. They cannot even reach the um, the seat. Ganon. So they are stuck in the immature phase. They lose the ability to differentiate. However, class, they replicate uncontrollably or they divide uncontrollably. Diba? Immature na nga, nagpaparami, papatalo, class. So what's the effect of that? So if they are overcrowding, they are, they are overcrowding the normal cells. So, in this normal cells lang doon, ang marami nagsisiksikan na immature cells, which causes cytopenia. So, since there is overcrowding of abnormal immature blasts, so it, if its effect is it decreases the normal red blood cells. So, anemia. Thrombocytemia. Thrombo anemia. So, it can relax. It can result to fatigue, shortness of breath, weakness, thrombocytopenia. So it can result to bleeding, bruising, leukopenia. So it increases the chances of having infections. 
So we have here the two classification of AML. So relax na tayo guys. Let's take it one step at a time. I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I explain ko naman sa inyo bawat step. So FAB classification. So it's M1 to M7. M0 to M7. Pwede. So meron um, FAB sabihin natin is a uh, an older type of classification because WHO classification is more recent. So for your WHO classification, it's divided into four. So AML with the recurrent cytogenetic abnormalities. So yun yung unan yung table na may encounter. We have A AML with multilineage dysplasia. We have A AML, AML therapy related M AML not otherwise specified. So, yung AML not otherwise specified, it's almost the same with their AFB classification. So, guys, kailangan natin. So, uh, mas specific na ngayon, mas precise na ngayon. So, mas marami kayo talagang i-memorize. But don't worry. We will take it one step at a time. So, under... AML with recurrent cytogenetic abnormalities. So, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Sampay hindi ko naman ipapa memorize sa inyo lahat, pero mag-focus na lang tayo dito sa categories and cell morphology. Yeah. So, I want to get your pen. I want you to take down notes. Isaysay natin, ha? So, mag-start muna tayo sa first part. So, AML, at syempre, dapat alam natin kung paano basahin. Yan. Di naman kailangan natin memorize that, but I just want you to have an idea. So, acute myeloid leukemia with translocation on chromosome 8 and chromosome 21. Mamay nang isabihin na. So, translocation, apparently, they're a portion of, a portion of chromosome 8 transferred to chromosome 21, translocated. Yan. So, lumipat siya. So, a portion of part of chromosome 8 went to chromosome 21 or vice versa. So, dito sa cytogenetics, dito sa my third column. Ma'am, sabi mo di memory sa third column. Gusto ko lang kayong, ano, i-briefing kung paano itong cytogenetics. So, ito, mapapansin nyo, ito, T. Kuha tayo ulit ng pang-drawing. T821. So this one points out on the um which um uh, kung anong chromosome yun apektohan. And this one, so this points out that these are the genes which transfer to another gene. So in the long arm Q, in the long arm of chromosome 822, so pumunta yung punta to sa long arm Q22 ng chromosome 21. Yung pat. So, ito, Q22 to, galing to sa chromosome 8. Ito, ito, this part is from chromosome 21. So, apparently, there is a fusion. There's a translocation. Yeah. So, now, let's see nga. Tingnan nga natin. So, itong AML with translocation on chromosome 8 and 21, there is greater than 20% plus. Diba? Kanina ko pa sinasabi yan. So, greater than 10% maturing granulocytes. Now, we can see our rods. Yeah. Miss nyo ba to? Our rods. So, from HEMO1 class, our rods are crystallized myelo peroxidases. So, isa pa? Our rods are crystallized myelo peroxidase. And so from the primary granules, the ba may enzyme na MPO. Nung tumaga siya, it was our rods. So rods, or it is an rod shape or spindle form shape. Tapos it's usually red. So nahanap mo lang to pag ang cell merong primary granule. And so, notice, guys, itong mga cell markers nila, may 13, may 33, yung ganyan. Because the, these markers are all found in your um, myelocytes, myeloblast, I mean. 
So next tayo. So AML with inversion in chromosome 16. So apparently there's an inversion. So blast with both monocytic and neutrophilic differentiation. So at least parang sabi, parang may, nagmamature naman ng konti. To, to, na nagiging monocyte and neutrophil, eosinophils and immature eosinophil. So, at least guys, sa cell morphology niya, hindi lang puro blast. At some point is, meron na ring maturation na nangyayari, nangyayari. So, notice in the prognosis, in this column, um, mostly they are, they have favorable um, prognosis. Yeah. Next tayo. APL with translocation in chromosome 15 and 17. Class, paki sulat nga dyan that it's similar with AFB M3. Text. Okay. So, sa AFB classification, meron tayong M3. So, it's almost the same with your APL with translocation on, on chromosome 15 and 17. So class, in this APL, so acute promyelocytic leukemia, so promyelocytic, so myelocyte, promyelocytes. Isn't it that I told you a while ago, promyelocytes are the one which which have your primary gland, granules. So expect our rods as well. Uh, primary granules are azurophilic, granules, and class. Ito yung gusto ko. So, more favorable, favorable if responsive to ATRA. So, ATRA in your notes, it, it's all transretinoic acid. All transretinoic acid. So, ibig sabihin, class, itong mga people with acute promyelocytic leukemia, pinapainom ng gamot, which is ATRA, retinoic acid. So, class, dati ng mga mapimpol pa ako, gumagamit ako ng retinol. So, that's a vitamin A derivative. The same thing with this. At, um, retinoid acid receptor. All transretinoic acid class. Ang galing ito. There's a vitamin A derivative which promotes blast to mature. Yan. So, if you have so much blast cells, ang galing. Pag inom pa ng, mat ng atara, magpapamature niya yung, mature niya yung mga blast cells. Galing, no? And AML with translocation on chromosome 9 and 11. Now, there are monoblasts, class. Myeloid stage, myeloid stem cell pa rin itong mga to, ha? Monoblasts and pro-monocytes. Yan. Ano man ang gusto kong sabihin dito sa... Can we move? Paano, paano, paano? Okay, next class. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yan. Mag-focus lang tayo sa, ano, sa mga madatali lang. So, notice that, that as we go to the bottom half of this um, discussion, naku, nagiging less favorable na yung mga prognosis natin. Yan, less favorable. So, AML, which is therapy, Related. So, therapy, it can be chemotherapy. So, molting lineage dysplasia. Gusto ko at some point, eh, alam nyo, basahin. Increased basophils. Okay. So, AML with translocation and chromosome 6 and 9. Any morphology may be seen, but myelo monocytic is most common. AML with inversion 3 or translocation in chromosome 3 and 3. Any morphology may be seen except APL. Okay. Um, ganyan. So... I just want you to take note the different um the different chromosome abnormalities. Yeah. Dito tayo sa key features of acute myeloid leukemia. Um, class, this is this is, 
his fame. So guys, this is um comma. This is also acute myeloid leukemias, not otherwise specified. Nakalo ka yung pangalan niya. So this um these types of AML did not fulfill the criteria according to WHO, but they are they are almost the same with your AFB. Kaya AFB na lang yung discuss ko, ha? So Pero basahin lang rin natin. So, AML with minimally differentiated. Notice na ang sinasabi nila, yung ginagabi lang term is differentiation. Kaya huwag yung kakalimutan yung term na yun. So, differentiation, so they're looking out, they're looking out, they're looking if the cells are maturing. So, AML with minimal differentiation. So, walang nagmamature. AML Kunti lang nagmamature. Next, AML without maturation. Wala talaga. So, my yellow blast can reach up to 90%. Dabi. Next, di ba ang nasabi ko, ang normal lang sa inyo, 1 to 2%. Next, AML with maturation. It's almost the same with translocation chromosome 8 and 21. We have acute myelo monocytic leukemia. So, the name pa lang. So, may monocytes, may granulocytes. Meron din tayong acute monoplastic or monocytic leukemia. We have erythroleukemia. So, marami ang mga normoblasts or erythroid precursors. And we have acute megakaryoblastic leukemia. So, blast with cytoplasmic blebs. Yun. Tapos, pag narinig na yun, with cytoplasmic blebs, it's acute megakaryoblastic leukemia. So, that cytoplasmic blebs are megakaryocytes. MPO negative, kasi megakaryoblast na to eh. Platelets na to eh. Wala naman silang myeloperoxidase. So, let's start now with your classification of AML by your FAB, French American British Group. Um, guys, yung minimorize namin nung college ganyan. kasi the WHO classification was not widely used yet. So, I want you to memorize this in a little bit of WHO classification. Ganyan. So, let's start with M1 tayo muna. So, acute myeloblastic leukemia without maturation. So, sabi niya, without maturation. So, you will notice that it is mostly primitive type or mga immature type lang. So, cells are negative for peroxidase class. Wala pa silang azurophilic gland. Yung gusto ba? Promyelocyte po yun. M2. Acute myeloblastic leukemia with maturation. So, you now see that your blasts are, begin, are beginning to mature. So, the, now, there's the presence of promyelocytes and myelocytes. Now, Positive na tayo sa MPO. Yeah. Actually, with SBB as well, so the black blue. We have 50% of cases, you can see our rods, diba? These are crystallized myeloperoxidase. And it's also the same with the classification of WHO, which has translocation in chromosome 8 and 21. Now, una. Next. Promyelocytic leukemia. So, promyelocytic. So, meron ng mga promyelocytes. So, there is azurophilic granules because these are promyelocytes. And expect that it has so much azurophilic granules that it now has our rods in bundles which we call faggot cells. So, plus, it's Ito medyo nakakagulat po. It's associated with DIC. Ayan, meron tayong cameo from hemostasis. Apparently, guys, ganito ang balibalita dyan. So, your promyelocyte activates your normal platelets. It still activates your normal platelets which can result to disseminated intravascular coagulation. So, class, ibig sabihin, complete na lang yung platelets na normal. I-activate pa. So, complication, guys, ha? Diba? Ang DIC. So, once you have M3, it can complicate into DIC. So, you have the doctor should be also watching out for the dimer, diba? Yung PTA, PT2. So, it's similar with your translocation from chromosome 15 to 17. 
the third one. So next, pamature na nung pamature. So mayalo monocytic leukemia. So presence of monocytic tests. So um, you can see a non-specific esterase activity. So ang mga class yung mga mayalo peroxidase, SPB, those are cytochemical stains. Once there is a monocyte class, nagiging positive na ang mga non-specific esterases. So alpha alpha naptil esterase alpha butyl alpha naptil butyrate tama ba ako may also your table so mga non specific esterases positive sila pag may monocytic ayan yeah, monocyte so m4 so it's formally known as nageli type so pag tinanong ko which one is nageli type m4 or myeloid monocytic leukemia since class this monocytes tends to infiltrates in the gums so associated with self soft tissue infiltrates okay. it can go to your gums so pag may swelling so pag may m4 ka may swelling ka yan yeah, actually when i was in college kasi my nickname is jelly so ang ta ang basa ko din ni jelly para wag niyo makalimutan wag niyo kalimutan guys m4 ni jelly next m5 monocytic so more than 80% of non erythroid bone marrow cells belong to the monocytic series so mostly the one or the up Mostly the cells which are affected are your monocytes, monoblasts, ganyan. So the other name is Schilling type. So, ano na yung mga ano natin? Schilling, Nageli, mga yan. Please take note. So here, so meron tayong M5A and M5B. So if it's M5A, it's mostly your immature cells, your blast cells, and M5V is mostly mature monocytes. Yeah. But please take note, class, abnormal pa rin sila, ha? They are positive with your non-specific esterase, which is alpha naptil acetate esterase ang haba pala. Yeah. Mga non-specific esterase yan, ha? So negative na sila sa MPO and SPB. Now we have erythroleukemia. Um, I'm reading that erythroleukemia has bad prognosis or digoglielmo disease. So all myeloid cell lines exhibit abnormal proliferation of myeloblasts and erythroblasts. So so mingit ang normal blast dito. So it is per periodic acid shift positive. So PAS is a um, stain for glycogen. And apparently, erythroleukemia is positive with glycogen. So PAS. So yung five, yung four and five, they are the ones which are positive in your non-specific esterases. Ito M6 PAS And it has poor prognosis. M7, we have megakaryoplastic leukemia. Of course, your megakaryocytes are which are the ones which are affected. So it's negative with MPO and SPB kasi wala naman siyang phospholipid. It's not really seen. Hindi siya enough para mag-positive sa SPB. Pero mayroong phospholipid. Myeloperoxidase negative kasi wala naman silang primary granules. Non-specific esterics though they are positive. So M0, your AML with minimal differentiation. Yeah, negative naman lahat. So, guys, I'll just give you the stable if you want to take a picture of it. So, it's your cytochemical findings in your um, AML. So, class, M1, M2, and M3, positive sila sa SBB, um, sudan black blue. So, this stains phospholipids sa specific esterase, positive sila. Pero sa non-specific esterase, negative. So, MF4, M4, so, apparently, mayroon pa rin palang primary granules. So, positive pa rin pala, guys. MPO, specific esterase, and non-specific esterase. M5, so negative sa SPB, positive in your non-specific esterases. M6, they are not performed. Positive sa alpha naptil acetate. Same with M7. And so, erythloquemia M6, positive for PAS. Let's get a 
Paano kung makalimutan ito? Patients with Down syndrome or trisomy 21, they have an extra um, 21st chromosome. So, they have a higher risk of having AML and ALL. Nasa limuot. What else? So, Philadelphia chromosome gives a good prognosis for chronic myeloid leukemia, but bad prognosis for ALL. So, acute lymphocytic leukemia na tayo and acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Kundi na lang, class. So, here, so it's common among children, ang AML among old people, same thing. They have more than 20% of blasts, which are lymphoblasts. Of course, nasa lymphoid stem cells na ang affected dito. But class, so common to sa mga children, good prognosis pag bata ang magkakaroon. Pero pag mula na ang magkakaroon, bad prognosis or poor prognosis. So it's risk factors are anti-nebioplastic agents. So those who are having chemotherapy, ionizing radiation, those who have lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, exposure to benzene, and multiple myeloma. So, class, this is your AF, AFB classification of ALL. So, I summarized it from your notes. So, L1, L2, and L3 na tayo. So, AFB classification is the oldest type of classification. So, L1, so, you should, this is the most common and has the best prognosis. You usually have small blasts. Ano tape niya natin? Sabihin niya sa akin, Mami, ba naman yung ilagay mong table sa, ano, sa notes at saka sa PowerPoint, yeah. Because these are added notes. I found this one in my reviewer when I was eh, when I was reviewing in sa AXA ko nagre-review. So, ito yung mga in-emphasize nila. Many and small blasts. Pag L1, guys, large ang blast ng M2 and Burkitt type pag L3. <laughs> and class, we have in L1, we have C-A-L-L-A or C-D-10 common <laughs> acute lymphos, lymphoid leukemia antigen. Meron rin tayong TDT. So, TDT is a DNA polymerase. Ang ibig sabihin niya, terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase. Yan. Nasa notes nyo, on page 5. On page 5. Or page 4. Yan. So, ano yan? Terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase. This is a DNA polymerase. So, it's found inside the nucleus. So, nucleus ng lymphoblast. So, class, itong mga markers na to, common lang sila sa mga lymphoblast, sa mga blood, blood cells of your um, lymphoid stem cell line. So, C-A-L-L-A -L -L or found in your CD10, CD19, CD20, L1 po yan. So, if you're going to stain it, all, all red O negative, positive lang sa L3 briquettes type, so, they are all positive with periodic shift. And the rarest one is L3. Ayan. So, ang pinakagusto kong i-underline nyo. So, small sa L1. Common ang L1. The CALLA, TDT. Sa lymphoblast lang sila nahanap ha. So, hindi ka makakakita ng TDT positive sa AML. Nangyan yan ako. Kala. cannot see that in acute myeloid leukemia or chronic myeloid leukemia because they are only found among the lympho, lim, lim, lymphoid cell stem line. The, the lymphoid stem cell line. Clear, clear drawings. Clear my drawings. Yeah. Okay, so the ito na naman tayo, yung WHO sabi niya, I think we can do better classification than a FAB, sabi niya. So, apparently w in 2008, the WHO classified your ALL instead of L1, L2, L3, gumawa sila nito, B-lymphoblastic, 
T lymphoblastic ALL and Burkitt cell leukemia. So, yan ang ginawa nila noong 2008. But now, 2016 class, tinanggal na nila yung Burkitt cell leukemia because they found out that Burkitt cell leukemia and Burkitt cell lymphoma are one and the same. So, can I just take note that in cases of T lymphoblastic ALL, meron tayong anterior mediastinal mass. Masa notes niya yan. Anterior mediastinal mass. Dapat class in an X-ray, itong itong left lung, dapat walang ganyang white. So, apparently, there's a mass in the mediastinal area. So, yan ang ano ng mga may ALL. So, now, class, in 2016, hindi ko naman ipapanumaray sa inyo. FAB lang, tsaka 2008 classification. Sige, okay na ako dito. Tsaka yung 2016, kahit yung three classifications lang, ha? So, we have B-cell lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma not otherwise specified. B-cell lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. As of now, here in 2016, I think pinagmamorph nila na ang leukemia at lymphoma. I still have to read upon that more. Pero so far, ganito yung sa 2016 classification with recurrent genetic abnormality. So under it, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Grabe, galing ng science na. Sobrang precise na nila sa kung anong leukemia mo at ang raming types of leukemia. And the third one is T-cell lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. Under it is early T-cell precursor lymphoblastic leukemia. So, yan. Ang mga natin. Ang mga ALLs natin. So, tayo. Guys, and so thank you for listening. You know, I'm thinking about you. So, abangan ng mga quizzes, ang mga handa kong quizzes. So, I'll see you soon, guys. So, I wanted to take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.